Greg, so today we're talking about Ghost of Tsushima again. This is part two of your reaction to it. We left off last time talking about how the game was not incredibly difficult for you, but you obviously were still enjoying it. And um, there wasn't necessarily a need to go out and get it today or right now because it wasn't a multiplayer. Both of those things have changed from what I understand. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is correct. Great. Um, so uh, just walk us through what you have experienced now that you've finished the game. So, yes, I have finished the game. Um, and what I will touch back on from the, the first time, the first impression, as you, as you will, that I said this game wasn't difficult, but it was incredibly fun. Now, that was just the first act. Um, I'm not sure if you've seen the first part or if you remember. I was like, oh, I think I'm halfway done. But then come to find out, I wasn't even a quarter of the game done. So it was a lot longer than I yeah. thought. This is a long game. Bit, man. It, <laughs> man. <laughs> it's a very, very long game. Like, it took me, what, a month to beat it. Oh, wow. And I was still putting in some quality time into yeah. it. But How I was many hours were stuff. you in at the time, do you think? Because you were um, doing a lot of side missions, I think, when we first we made that. Yeah, recording. the first time, I want to say it was about 12 to 14 hours. Oh, wow. But again, I was doing like side missions and, mm -hmm. and a storyline. So the biggest change in your reaction to the game is is the multiplayer, right? Like that that mm -hmm. was the most unexpected thing to happen. I, I mean, I, I know initially in your, your reaction, uh, you had hoped that the game difficulty would change that would become a bit more difficult and that obviously happened but this multiplayer thing came out of nowhere i remember in the first impression i was mentioning as far as what they could easily do to implement a multiplayer and i didn't think they would i like <laughs> so when they made the announcement i was like oh snap <laughs> like this game is just amazing yeah it, oh my god like i'm 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 genuinely hyped yeah um, cause what I was saying from before, it can easily be like a dynasty warriors right. where you have three or four people on the team, you can spread out mm -hmm. or, you know, divide and conquer, or you can go together, yeah. but it can easily be, um, implemented in a multiplayer. Right. And then they made the announcement like what, two, three weeks later, right. a couple of days ago that there's going to be a multiplayer. And it seems so, like a bit more like mystic or magical almost in in like its style. At least it looked like people were like leaving coming out of a portal or something like yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah, like 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 evil. Right. Like it was like a lot of red background like uh -huh. it, it it just supposed to like it seemed like it represented something evil was right. about to happen. I <laughs> I wonder if the multiplayer will be tonally will be a little different from the main campaign in that it'll kind of embrace some of this kind of like magic, you know, uh, you know, I don't know, this magical element or anything like that. Because if I remember correctly, one of the aspects of the game was that there was a bit of like legend behind the main character, right? Mm -hmm. Like he was scaring people in like his tactics and things like that. Is that true? Exactly. Or am I, am I, no, 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 no. Okay. That's actually, so why you playing is him, you are making decisions on how you uh, tackle different missions and things like that. Mm -hmm. But your legend is growing. Right. And they're telling stories about this man called the ghost. The ghost. Yeah. So yeah. I wonder and if the multiplayer will like lean into that a little bit. Like right, these right. these characters that we saw in the trailer, um, if they're supposed to be ghosts, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, right. Like, right. Like creatures of legend. <laughs> right. you know? They came from out of nowhere right. from a right. dark mystical portal and right. killed everything inside. When really, yeah, they I mean, just it's came, a possibility. They, they just walked from the other side of the tree. <laughs> right. They came from the, the bowels of hell. <laughs> right. That was really a bush. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> so, so what are you expecting from the multiplayer? I know it's just a trailer, but like, what do you think? you know, it's going to look like in terms of the gameplay. From what I was seeing, it it easily like it's going to be co-op mm -hmm. where it can be up to four players. Um, each player, it looked like there's a um, type of character you get to pick. As far as I remember, it was like an assassin, a ronin, uh, a hunter, and I believe the last one was a samurai. Um, but 
you know, you're going to be tackling missions together. Mm -hmm. Like when all of them, you've seen them together fighting other enemies. Right. So that seemed like it's going to be like a more of a co-op where you're going to be tackling maybe other storyline missions or side missions as a unit. Mm -hmm. I mean, for all we know, they might even implement a versus right. or, you know, anything like that. They haven't touched on it, but it's possible. It'd be, you got to have a PVP. That's, that, yeah. that would be... It kind of feels like it would be a little like for honor ish. Yes, you know yes. if they did that, that would be that'd be crazy. Which for honor was pretty dope. Yeah, that was great. So moving on, you know, you talked a little bit about the the issues that you were having with the difficulty, and mm -hmm. like we said at the top, that rapidly changed. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. so you, what you didn't realize is it seemed like you were in not the tutorial phase, but just still very much in an easy you know, part of the gameplay and the overall story, right? Right. So what I didn't know was, like, from the first impression, I was about 12 to 14 hours in. And at that point, I thought I was halfway into the game. Right. In actuality, I wasn't even a third. Mm -hmm. There's uh, three acts. Um, in that first impression, I was probably halfway through the first act. Once I completed the first act, the, the the degree of difficulty shifted. Mm -hmm. Enemies became more aggressive. They had more moves, different weapons, different tactics. The the archers instead of shooting one arrow, they started shooting three. Mm -hmm. um, it it just the whole dynamic of the game shifted. Now it was I won't say it was incredibly more difficult, but it was a little bit more challenging. Where I was like, oh okay, I see what you're doing. Right. Like let's. Let's go ahead and really learn these moves. So, for an example, before, um, you can almost kind of get away with butt mashing to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. Once you got to Act 2, you had to learn your craft. You right. had to really, really dive in into um, knowing exactly what moves you want to do for what enemy. And it was unforgiving. So, you had to be a bit more intentional with like the controls and things like that. I assume. Exactly. Okay. So, for an example, there's uh, four diff four different fighting stances, and each stance um, you can approach a enemy a certain way, or it takes a certain amount of damage. Mm -hmm. So then, you for an example, you might have this water stance that's specifically for people with shields. Mm -hmm. If you're in that correct stance and you're fighting someone with a shield, it's going to stagger them a lot faster. Mm -hmm. But if you're in the wrong stance and you're fighting a person with the shield, it's not going to do anything to them. They're going to deflect everything. Yeah. They're going to be able to reverse everything. So the degree of complication increases once you hit Act 2 where you got to know exactly what you want to do. So these stances, is this something that you change on the fly that you're expected? Like whenever you meet somebody that you're about to fight, you have to adapt your stance on the fly exactly okay so to, to change your stance you had the whole r2 and then depending on what stance you want to do square was the water stance mm -hmm. circle was the stone stance mm -hmm. x is the fire stance or whatever right so you literally had to go on the fly but the the challenging thing which i thought was fun you might have all four types of enemies around you Mm, okay. So you're constantly switching your stance. Right. And so there there might be a guy with a spear in front of you and then another guy with a shield attacking you from behind. Right. And you have to adopt you know. your or adapt your, your stances on the fly. On the fly. Gotcha. Like if you're not quick with the reflexes or can't remember the actual stances, you're gonna have a problem. Yeah, you're gonna catch that arrow in the back. <laughs> yes. <laughs> a few oh, arrows yeah. in the back. Cause they like I said, at act two, they throwing three arrows at you at a time. Right. And I, I remember one of the things that you were saying was that if you you had these these duels or these standoffs you would do with people, and if you cut them down, you end up getting a lot of health back. Right. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Is was that still the case that you ended up getting like these health drops, uh, pretty consistently? Um, yeah. It depends on what actual stats that you have equipped. I'm sorry. Uh, different. Uh, there were different buffs that you can have equipped. Right. So you can have about three or four of those buffs out of five, mm -hmm. and if you kill somebody, it'll give you a significant amount of health back, but. You might, because you picked those buffs, you might be lacking in melee strength. 
Right. Or you might be lacking in the amount of health you can have in general. So what's the difference between the duels and the standoffs? Okay, so a duel is when it's just literally one versus one. You might be going against like a general or a captain, and it's literally an epic battle between you and that person. No one interferes, and the degree of difficulty is a lot higher than just fighting just a regular person. So are these more like... These are boss battles, essentially? Yes, okay. exactly. Got it. Boss battles. Mm -hmm. So a standoff is when you actually approach a group of people where you have the option to announce yourself, make yourself be heard, mm -hmm. to know that you are the biggest and baddest person around in right. town and that you're willing to square up on all of them. So I assume so, that's like the more honorable approach, right? That's the more honorable approach. You know, the dishonorable approach would be to assassinate them silently or poison them or something like right, that. Right, right. But take the honorable approach. It's like almost like high noon mm. uh, from the Wild Wild West, yeah. but with your sword. Right. First person who attacks at the right time mm -hmm. is the victor. Right. Now, before, it was incredibly easy mm -hmm. in Act 1. Like, no matter what what the group of people that I actually approached, I was able to just slaughter them. Right. And I'm like, okay, this is kind of game breaking that if I approach 10 people, I can easily cut down three or four of right. them mm -hmm. just for doing this. Act two, <laughs> it was a different story. Right. <laughs> <laughs> So act two, they introduce the actual enemy doing pump fakes. Oh, wow. So, exactly. So this is how it works. Once you are uh, ready in that stance, you hold down triangle, mm -hmm. and then you have to release triangle at the perfect time when the enemy is attacking. Right. If you go too fast or too slow, then you will be striked. And sometimes you might even die. Right. You know, mm -hmm. so that's the gamble. Right. But if you do it successfully, you can kill three to four people with ease. Right. Act two, they activated pump face. Mm -hmm. So there will be times where you think they're about to attack you, but they'll literally like sight, mm -hmm. you know, and then when you release that button, it's over. Right. Then that feels even petty. later, I'm even not yeah. even quite sure why that's petty, but that feels petty. <laughs> it's petty. It's very petty. <laughs> Then they introduce double and triple pump fakes. Mm -hmm. So it was like, like Jesus. Right. Like, okay. Then they switched it up where they would attack a lot faster. Because mm -hmm. usually you might just be sitting there for like six, seven seconds before they even pump fake or attack. Right. It got to the point where you'll jump into the stands. Two seconds later, they're already attacking. Right. So it, it catches you off guard. So I found myself... Uh, in Act Two, losing a lot of standoffs. Mm -hmm. So that was one thing that did change. But it, like I said, it was a lot more challenging for me. It made it a lot more fun. Right. So it seems like once you got out of Act One, um, the game really opened up, and it was enjoyable before, but it mm -hmm. became so much more rewarding, so much more enjoyable yes. after Act One. Yes. Okay. So we talked a little bit about the story in the overall campaign in the first video, but you obviously hadn't finished the game before. Um, I'm curious what you think having beat the game. And before I let you jump into that, I just want to say to the people, spoiler alerts here. Major yeah, spoiler, spoiler alerts, right? Um, I'm sure that a graphic is appearing up on your screen right now, blinking, <laughs> potentially. Um, so please know, uh, spoiler alerts, uh, this is your last warning. Here we go. Um, from the beginning to the end, to the very end, you're making choices. And these choices are either honorable or dishonorable. And for the story you're always following the dishonorable choice because you're dealing with dishonorable people, right. essentially. Mm -hmm. And so it's almost like fight fire with fire. Mm -hmm. And because of this, you are making conscious decisions to literally disobey orders from leadership. Mm -hmm. Who is your uncle? Right. You know, your uncle is like literally 
the the man in charge. And because of these decisions, it gets to the point where he has to decide what he has to do with you. So you end up um, defeating the Mongols. You end up defeating Kotal Khan, which was an epic battle. Mm-hmm. Like, man, this the story driven up to that point was amazing. Mm-hmm. And the very ending at that point, what made it even better was you had to go against your uncle. Oh, wow. Right. So your uncle is the person who literally raised you since you was young because your parents was killed. Right. He took him in, but he literally raised him as a son. And when I say literally, they literally tried to make it law that he was going to be the sole heir. Mm. You know, so that's how much he loved him. Right. But because of his decisions to fight with dishonor Mm -hmm. and then, you know, like I said, the legend of him being the ghost has spread so much that the Shogun, who's ahead of everything. Right. Like the king. Order his death. Okay. You know, but as punishment to the uncle, he had to be the one to kill Jin. So the final battle. It wasn't against the main Mongol. It was literally against your uncle. Oh, wow. And once you actually defeat him, you actually come up with a choice Mm -hmm. to either kill him or spare his life. But his uncle is a man of honor. Mm -hmm. Like, he is a samurai. Right. He literally begs you, like, when he knows he's about to die, he was like, please. Kill me. Give me my honorable death. Right. So, at one hand, you want to... But like, man, this is my uncle. This is what he wants. Mm-hmm. I want to give him the honorable death that he feel he deserves. But then at the end of the day, you understand that the relationship dynamic is so complicated. Right. And that he has to follow orders. But at the same time, you don't want to kill your uncle. Right. Of course. So so you know? when you're fighting the uncle, um, is the character like... Uncle, why are you doing this? You know, like, does he understand? Nope, he understands. He under he, he completely understands. understands. Oh wow, he completely understands. Mm-hmm. He tries to talk him out of it. Like, mm-hmm. we don't have to do this. Right. He's like, I don't want to kill you, mm-hmm. but he understand why he's doing what he's doing does- because he's so tied to his honor. Right. He's willing to sacrifice his nephew slash son. Is is the uncle? Does the uncle want to to fight him, or is he kind of like you? You've done so wrong, or you've been so dishonorable. Like I have to do this. No, he doesn't. He doesn't want to. Okay, he doesn't want to. But this is orders from the shogun. Right. So is is this ending more of a function of your play play style, or is this like the definitive ending? You know what I mean? Like, are there alternate endings? I don't know. Would I don't know if it's alternate. Okay. Because you get a choice. Right. I think that's literally the only choice throughout the whole game. To like either kill him how you or, approach or okay. To kill him with honor or to not kill him. Right. Right. And for me, I'm like, man, I don't want to offer you like that. Right. You my uncle, man. Yes. Like, what did you and think? Is yeah, I I spared him. Oh, that I'm yeah, sure I brought him. shame. Did that? Not, did did you not feel ashamed that you didn't give him his honorable death? He he did, but you could kind of see relief. Uh-huh. Like, because nobody really wants to die. Yeah, yeah. But the words he said afterwards was like, you know, you do know you will be hunted for right. the rest of your days, yeah. basically. He basically regardless. became like, the Dark Knight, it sounds like. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So is this is this a classic kind of tale of... You know, to fight a monster, you have to become a monster. Is it that? Exactly. Okay. okay. Exactly. Because there were certain decisions. This is what pissed me off about Lord Shimra. This is the uncle. Mm-hmm. Where he was willing to sacrifice people for honor. Mm. So, for an example, there was a bridge that they had to cross. And then this bridge, at the end of it, literally had like a machine gun arrow machine and it's like he wanted to make this decision like let's go across this bridge and attack the enemy head on right 
And it's like, no, you guys will clearly get wiped out. Right. If we cross so, the bridge like this, we're going to get wiped out. What we we're going to get wiped out. Go this is going to be way. part two. <laughs> you yeah. know, if we go around This is the about back. to be the wipe out of part two. <laughs> right. Yeah. Because they already got wiped out one time mm-hmm. trying to follow honor. Right. And that's why Jen was like, you know what? I'm not about to go down this rabbit hole again. Because the first time we tried to fight these fools with honor, mm-hmm. we all almost got murdered. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And this lost is the second time. Basically, what we were yeah. fighting for, you know. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Millions of people died because of your honor. Right. So the second time he had an opportunity, like, okay, we can go across this bridge and die like we did the first time. Right. Or I could just sneak in and poison everybody. Right. Yeah. We can be honorable and which he did. dead men. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, so but those are the kind of decisions that he had to make. Mm-hmm. Throughout the entire game. Mm. Do I follow the honorable way that my uncle wants, which is going to get us all killed? Mm -hmm. Or should I just man up and handle the business myself on how I see fit? So I'm wondering, given how the story ends, if this is another interesting take on um, humanizing a villain or at least twisting a narrative in a in a different way similar frankly to the last of us and how they they switched your perspectives i'm wondering mm-hmm. if this is kind of an another interesting attempt to do that because the mongols are clearly like the bad guys right but in right. in a weird way the uncle is also the bad guy he's he's an antagonist right mm-hmm. and it's it's a, a revealing your character a little bit in how ultimately you know you deal with the uncle whether you spare him or whether you end his life right and give him that horrible death so i'm wondering in your mind if this is is another one of those things and what that's kind of saying about the storytelling that's going on in, in in this yeah i will say it does have that aspect not as big as The Last of Us was because you literally play the entire perspective of someone. But at the end, it does a great job giving you a little bit of insight on why the uncle felt the way he felt, right. on why you should follow these rules. And it made sense. Mm-hmm. You know, even though the cost of it was millions of people dying, he literally had this conversation with Jen before he decides that he has to kill him. That, you know, you're going to be replaced. You're no longer a samurai. You're going to be replaced with new samurai. And the Shogun has to regain control. Right. Throughout the game, you're disobeying everyone. You're disobeying all leadership, generals, the Shogun. You're disobeying them. Right. But at the flip side, the people are rallying for you. You know, you're the one that's out there risking his life to save at any means. And because of the legend that's growing, people are rallying for you. Not the Shogun, not Lord Shimura, the uncle. Mm -hmm. You know, so when they was having the conversation like, okay, samurais are going to take your place. The uncle gave a great narrative like, here's the difficult part. You have saved everyone as the ghost. Mm -hmm. Everyone knows the ghost was an outlaw. How are people going to follow us now versus an outlaw of someone who saved everyone? Right. Because you didn't follow the rules. What makes you think that the people of the nation is going to still follow us? Right. You've you've in many ways like damaged the the samurai the rep like the samurai and like the honor you know in the hero right because you have an archetype Mm -hmm. of what a hero is and what a hero Mm -hmm. is supposed to do you've won the day but there's an argument that says like have you lost the war you know exactly (laughs) exactly so that was the the perspective like wow like yes he wants to die with honor he wants to always fight with honor right but his honor code wasn't just for him it was for everyone in the nation. Right. You know, so that with, with that perspective, it makes you like, oh, wow. Like, the, there are consequences with your actions. Right. And depending on who you are, the consequences can be even greater 
And because of the ghost saved everybody, that consequence is that everybody can be like, screw the samurai, screw the shogun. Right. We don't need them. We got the ghost. We can do whatever we want to do. Right, right. So so from that perspective, you can kind of understand on why he was so gung ho on honor and everything like that. Right. And that's why I didn't want to kill him mm -hmm. because I understood his viewpoint. It's interesting because I think um I have a whole theory on just storytelling and some of the heroes that we um elevate in our in our stories, right? And it's it's largely based on this idea that heroes are reflective of the time, right? Mm -hmm. There's a reason that Superman worked when Superman was coming out in like the 30s because we were coming out of the Depression and it was right. this guy who could do anything, right? Um, mm -hmm. Captain America, you know, the first image of, you know, Captain America is him punching the hell out of Hitler, right? Right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's the heroes are a reflection of the time. And I wonder if in, in an interesting way, if this story is kind of speaking to that time period and like denoting the change of, you know, this hero archetype, i.e. the samurai and like changing over to, you know, the ghost, <laughs> you know, right, and right. like what that says about maybe the times. And I don't know, that seems kind of almost political in, in, in an interesting way, which, which definitely maybe political. is like an unintended <laughs> consequence, but, or maybe right. not clearly intended. I mean, it's a game that designed it. So where do you think this game falls within kind of the, the pantheon of, of games that came out this year? Because, you know, The Last of Us had this really compelling story um, and it seems like this has a really compelling story on top of the fact now that it's going to have this, what seems like at least like a really interesting multiplayer aspect to it as well that, you know, they clearly had in development and were just kind of like, we're going to hit you with this on the side and blow your mind, right. <laughs> you know? Right. Um, so where do you think it falls? Like, is this now more of a game of the year contender? Because last time you, you were like, oh, no, I don't know, you know, so... Uh, Why you got to bring up old stuff? Right? <laughs> <laughs> it's part of the process. It's a development, yeah. you know. So where do you think that falls? Do you think this is a game of the year contender now? Okay. Before I answer that, um, I'm gonna address your first point, which one thing that I really enjoy, like you said, is the storytelling. Now more than ever, we are getting a good sense of perspective. As you were saying before, it was Superman. Uh, you always got only one perspective, Superman, Captain America, you know, now in storytelling, you're now getting an insight on the other character, whether it's the antagonist, right. the bad guy or a supporting character, which brings in even more, more of a compelling story, because now you're getting the actual understanding on what drives them. Right. A little empathy. You know, so like for the information with Laura Shimra, knowing you know, what his thought process was, it it just fed in more into the story that he wasn't just this honor-bound uncle. Right. There was rules that he wanted to follow and the reasons why. Right, right. You know. The rules maintained society. They were kind of governing exactly. us all. Yeah. Exactly. Or like the, the Joker, the Joker movie. Right. You know, learning what he went through, what he struggled from, mm -hmm. what he was suffering from, the society that he was in, right. you come to understand like, oh, wow, that's why he's a villain. Right. Or in this sense, a hero amongst other people that's just like him. Right. You know, so it's all about perspective. Right. And because they introduce that into this aspect of the game, I really feel it has a really great shot as uh -oh. a contender of Game of the Year. <laughs> I, I know before I said, no, the last, because you got to understand, The Last of Us is a dope game. Right, right. It, pardon my French. The Last of Us is a dope ass game. <laughs> like, it was for sure going to win Game of the Year. Yeah. But uh, knowing the length of this game, the right. amount of content it had, the, the replayability as far as, you know, the things I can do after the game. Because mm -hmm. right now, I beat the game, but there's still more stuff I can explore, still more side right. missions. And I'm excited to still continue on that journey. Right. Plus, with the multiplayer, it's not Ooh. looking too good with The Last of Us it's being a that challenger. dominant. <laughs> it's a challenger. They're like, it could... Honestly, it can go either way. Right. But what I will say right now, I think it's between them two. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Like, yeah, it has a solid chance. Depending on how this multiplayer pops out, 
And also depending on if The Last of Us don't come out with no more surprises. Because I know they just came out with that grounded mode. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which seems ridiculous. I want to try it, but I ain't got that kind of time right. yet. <laughs> Who has uh, that kind of time? <laughs> I don't know. Like, People a... who's doing this full time. Yeah, yeah. Where no, I'm trying true. to get to. <laughs> and, and, and in pandemic mode, you know, folks yeah. have a lot more time as well. Yeah. If, yeah. This, is, if this is my only thing I had to do, boy, mm-hmm. I would be on it. Um, but so, having completed ahead. the game... Um, do you think we're going to see uh, a sequel to this at all? It feels like the groundwork has been laid for a sequel, for sure. They could. Yeah. They could, depending on how the storyline unfolds. Mm. Um, the Shogun wanted you dead. Right. You never see the Shogun. Mm. You hear about him. Right. But they can e- easily introduce him. Right, right. You know, efforts to kill the ghost can be ramped up. Right, right. You know, into a whole new separate game. So it it possibly can be another game i wouldn't see why it wouldn't right right uh, especially with and, the, how it's being received it's being received really well and if yeah yeah nothing but know. great things and then like now they're about to throw a multiplayer on there right um the last of us gotta come with a multiplayer now mm-hmm. they got to i mean i don't to. know if they can just pull <laughs> that out i mean it it seems like not even it seems sucker punch clearly had a multiplayer locked and loaded and they didn't mm-hmm. weren't telling anybody about it and they were like here, just take this game, enjoy yourself. Yeah, that was fly. That was dope. That was boom. I'm gonna hit you with this multiplayer. <laughs> right, 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 right. You know, like they they clearly had that planned. Um, but, but we don't know if The out. Last of Us is doing that either. That's true. Because they had a they had a multiplayer in the last one. They did. That did. It, yeah. And it's really it's really interesting. It's not a requirement, but um, because I th- I do think there was a time in gaming where it was like absolutely everything had to have a multiplayer and Mm -hmm. i don't think that it's it's that there's that same level of expectation um Mm -hmm. people will obviously welcome it but i do think i mean like look if 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 the last of us comes out with the multiplayer i'll be proven wrong right um Mm -hmm. but i i i was not expecting a multiplayer from the last of us um part two and i frankly have not heard anybody clamoring for it um and i think part of that is just because the game itself is just great you know so i think i think we just give it a pass because it was so great right but i am one of those people who's clamoring for it like i haven't haven't played i haven't played it again since i beat it Mm, um because i already started on the hardest difficulty at the time right um, so once I did that, mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, there's no point. But now they come up with this grounded mode, but that grounded mode takes a lot of dedication that I can't give it that yeah. like I want. It's an but unreasonable a I can do it expect- though. It's an unreasonable amount of of pressure to to <laughs> play the whole yes. game if you die once. It's over, fam. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know I can I mean? imagine a lot of TVs broken from oh people throwing a PlayStation control into the screen. Yeah. I mean I'm yeah. I uh, personally, I, I've been on the, the fence about buying any new game. And, and uh, part of what I was thinking was like, oh, well, there's not a multiplayer. I don't have to get on it. But if there's a multiplayer on there now, you know, I don't, not, I don't yeah. know. So I this is on know. the recording, people. He has to get it. There's a multiplayer. We can play together now. There's he a has multiplayer. To get it. Yeah, yeah. In so. the comments below, say, Ryan, you have to get the game now. Don't back out. Help me, people. <laughs> wants to bring me back to playstation i've been on this pc life this pc yeah, master race as they call it <laughs> man. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. um so so definitely a game of the year contender um yes i i'm also curious if they will drop some additional dlcs um it i would assume after dropping a multiplayer out of nowhere that they're they're like we've given you enough right um yeah but definitely a game of the year contender um, is there anything else that you you feel like is important about this game that the people should know about? Um, actually, actually, just to spread on what you were just saying, um, if they did extra DLCs, they can easily implement that with again new storylines. That's something that I'll be willing to pay for without a problem because I'm satisfied with the seventy bucks that I spent. Right. You know, they gave us a lot of content. Mm-hmm. So if they came out was like, hey, look, we got another act. We know one act is like 15, 20 hours. Right. Hey, extra 10, 20 bucks. Boom. I'm paying for it. Right. 
Right. You know, because because the story was so great, the gameplay is so great, mm -hmm. they can expand on it if they do it right. Right, right. Well, there you have it, people. Ghost of Tsushima completed. Um, it seems like it's a fantastic game. Uh, Greg, do you have any any last words for the people out there? Yes. Go buy the game. It's that simple. Yeah. If you have a PlayStation, go buy it. It's worth every penny. If you don't have a PlayStation, if you have Xbox, go buy a PlayStation. So you can buy this game. <laughs> Period. I'm trying to tell you guys, this game is a really nice exclusive yeah. um, on, on seriousness. Like, for an example, if I didn't have a PlayStation and I played a demo of it, I would have went and bought a PlayStation to yeah. buy this game. Join the wave. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's my my ending thought on it. It's an incredible game. It's worth every penny. Um, I have fun. I am excited about the multiplayer. And if you guys agree or if you enjoyed this episode, make sure in the comments you let me know. Any feedback is definitely welcome. Definitely. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, theories, hypotheses, feedback, conclusions, just let me know. But with that being said, you can always check out more of my content from right here on the top left. And with that being said, thanks for the love and support. And I will see you guys soon. Peace. <laughs>